Prince, a Just For Me story. Dave the Brave Meets a Big Orange Monster by Dave Palmer. And narrated by me, Kathy Najimy. Dave was in a very big hurry. He hopped as quickly as he could. And when he reached the old tomato soup can, he bumped right into his friend Bertram. Dave, don't go past the very large fence, the bunny said. I saw something very big and very orange over there. I think it might be a monster. A monster, laughed Dave. I love monsters. I'm going home to watch Scary Monster Theater with my dad. It starts in a few minutes. Anyway, going past the very large fence is the only way to get home. Bye. When Dave reached the very large fence, he heard some tweets. But it was no monster. It was his friend, Rhonda. Dave, don't go past the acorn field, she tweeted. There's something big and orange over there. And it's round, too, with big round eyes. Yikes, said Dave. But he still had to get home to his dad. So he said goodbye to Rhonda, and he hopped away down the road. When Dave got to the acorn field, he heard a whisper. Hello, the whisper said. But it wasn't a monster. It was Dave's friend, Graham. Psst, Dave, don't go past the tall green grass, said the groundhog. There's something over there that's big and orange and round with big round eyes. It has a tail, too, and it's flying. But I have to go that way to get home, said Dave. Dave thought about what his friends had seen, and it sounded a lot like a real live monster. It was big and orange. It was round and had big, round eyes. It had a long tail. It could even fly. But Dave had to go past the tall green grass because it was the only way to get home. Dave decided to just take a peek through the grass. And there in the road was the big orange monster. But then Dave thought about what he'd seen. And when he peeked through the tall grass again, he saw a big balloon. It wasn't a monster at all. It was a big orange balloon with a funny face drawn on it, and it had a long string tied to it. Hello, monster, said Dave. I think I'll call you Gerald. And then Dave happily ran home and told his dad all about his very monster-filled day. The end. Read Dave the Brave and other Just For Me stories at NickJr.com. Nick Jr. presents a Just For Me story. The Grumpy Bug by Robert Skull. And narrated by me, Sandra Bernhardt. Once there was a really, really grumpy bug. His mommy said, You're really, really grumpy. Why don't you go out and play? So he did. Before long, he met three friendly flies. Hi, hi, hi. They said. And the grumpy bug said, Play with me. The three friendly flies just looked at him. Play with me. He said again. But the three friendly flies flew away. He's grumpy. Yeah, he's grumpy. This made the grumpy bug very grumpy. <laughs> Soon he met two little blue bugs. Play with me, said the grumpy bug. The two little blue bugs just looked at him. Play with me, he said again. But the two little blue bugs ran away. What's his problem? Yeah, what's he so grumpy about? This made the grumpy bug very, very grumpy. Then he met a big sleepy snail. Play with me, said the grumpy bug. The big sleepy snail just looked at him. Play with me, he said again. But the big sleepy snail hurried slowly away. This made the grumpy bug very, very, very grumpy. Then the grumpy bug was all alone. This made him so grumpy that he kicked and ran and yelled and hopped and grumped and splashed and splashed again 
and splashed again. <laughs> then he splashed and laughed, and he bounced on some mushrooms and laughed, and he slid down a tall blade of grass and laughed, and he laughed and he laughed and he laughed, and he laughed all by himself. He was so busy laughing and splashing and bouncing and sliding and having fun that he didn't notice everybody else. When the grumpy bug saw them, he stopped. The others looked at him, and he looked at them. Then a little blue bug asked, "Can we play with you?" The grumpy bug looked at them some more, and then he said, "Uh huh." And so they did. This made the grumpy bug very, 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 very happy. The end. Read the grumpy bug and other just for me stories at nickjr.com. Story. Please, baby, please, by Spike Lee and Tanya Lewis Lee, with illustrations by Kadir Nelson, and narrated by me, Spike Lee. Go back to bed, baby, please, baby, please. Not on your head, baby, 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 please. Keep off the wall, baby, baby, please, baby. You share that ball, please, baby, baby, baby. Don't eat the sand, baby, 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 please. Now hold my hand, baby, baby, please, baby. It's time to go, please, baby, please. Don't be so slow, baby, 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 please. Please eat your peas, baby, 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 baby. Don't be a tease, baby, baby, please, baby. Please don't splash, baby, baby, please, baby. No, in the trash, baby, 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 baby. Now you sleep tight. Please, baby, please. Kiss me goodnight, mama, mama, mama. Please. The end. Just for me story, Rumble Grumble Gurgle Roar, by Johnny Belt. And narrated by me, Whoopi Goldberg. One morning, while swimming along in the icy blue sea, little penguin heard a very funny noise. Rumble Grumble Gurgle Roar. Little penguin looked around to see where the funny noise was coming from. Rumble Grumble Gurgle Roar. That noise is coming from my tummy. That means I'm hungry. So little penguin and her rumbly grumbly tummy went to find something good to eat. That treat looks good to eat. So little penguin opened her beak as wide as penguinly possible. Chomp chomp chomp. It was white. It was fluffy. But it wasn't good to eat. I'm hungry! Shouted little penguin. Rumble grumble grumble roar. Well, you can't eat me," said the big white polar bear. "You need to find something else to eat." And he went back to sleep. With that, little penguin and her rumbly grumbly tummy waddled on. That treat looks good to eat. So little penguin opened her beak as wide as penguinly possible. Chomp chomp chomp. It was brown, and it was plump, but it wasn't good to eat. I'm hungry," shouted little penguin. Grumble, 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 roar. Well, you can't eat me," said the big brown walrus. "You need to find something else to eat." And he went back to basking in the sun. So little penguin and her rumbly, grumbly tummy waddled on. That treat looks good to eat. So little penguin opened her beak as wide as penguinly possible. Chomp, chomp, chomp. It was orange. It was shiny, but it wasn't good to eat. I'm hungry! Shouted little penguin, and her tummy agreed. Grumble, 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 roar. 
Well, you can't eat me, said the big daddy penguin. But I tried to eat something white and fluffy, and it turned out to be a polar bear. Then I tried to eat something brown and plump, but it was a walrus. And then I tried to eat something orange and shiny, but it was you. And I'm still hungry. Rumble, 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 roar. The daddy penguin chuckled and said, Little penguins don't eat polar bears, and they don't eat walruses, and they certainly do not eat big daddy penguins. What do little penguins eat? asked little penguin. Little penguins eat little fish, said the big daddy penguin, which are silver and shiny and very yummy. Especially if you are a hungry little penguin with a rumbly, rumbly tummy. Read Rumble Grumble Gurgle Roar and other Just For Me stories at nickjr.com.